ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the NJPW Puro Wrestler Review Japanese Wrestling Update Crossover Show for the G1 Preview featuring myself, Andre C, and the absolutely wonderful, the ever effervescent, our, our princess, it's Melba! How you doing, Melba? What an introduction. I gotta start wearing a crown now, don't I? <laughs> Ooh, it is hot as balls here. Oh my god. <laughs> you are out in the sun all day or day. This girl cannot relate. I match the wall behind me. So, um, so, so just just look at this. Look, look, look. I'm showing a little skin, but like that's my farmer's tan from working all day. <laughs> the scandal, the scandal showing the a little scandal. skin. The showing scandal. a little ankle. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, my ankles are white. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, what a week it has been. We have had a roller coaster of temperature here. We had some cooling down on the weekend. We've been heating back up all week. I'm still nursing this injury, but I can move around. Yay! Without pain. I'm still getting numbness, but the, you know, the nerve will heal eventually. How are you doing, my friend? A good long days in the hot sun, but I'm in my nice cold basement recording a show with you after my internet mm. was faulty for a couple of days and just uh, one of my neighbors still doesn't have internet, so I don't know what's going on. So this could all crash down in front of us right in the middle of the show. So be prepared oh for that, ladies and gentlemen. Let's hope not. <laughs> yeah. Let's hope not. Oh, but glorious, glorious chaos. Yeah, we're not here to talk about me and you. We're here to talk about no. the absolutely stellar G1 lineup that we have coming to us uh, as mm -hmm. this comes out on Friday on our YouTube channel and Friday night on OLE on JWU. Mm -hmm. uh, the show starts tomorrow. It, it starts on Saturday, the 20th, with 10 matches on Saturday and then nine more matches on Sunday because Sunday, Kanosuke Takeshita is working a show at DDT instead of working this G1 match, which is match that is happening on this B block match that is happening on the second, that's supposed to happen on the second day is now happening on day three on the A block show. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I don't know who booked that, but you know, I mean, it keeps him busy. Keeps mm -hmm. him doing his rounds, and he is technically the DDT representative in the G1, isn't he? He is. He is. I think it on his graphic shows both DDT and AEW's logos. So it's probably a thing. DDT said we want him for this match and make it work. <laughs> you know what? I mean, I as someone who has been enjoying DDT as of late, mm -hmm. I, I say bring it. They need it. Yeah. <laughs> they, they definitely need it. It's going to be a nice change of pace for them. There's, there has been, on the last couple shows, they've been preparing for that Peter Pan mm -hmm. kind of thing that's been coming up. So um, they don't have English subtitles, which... No. Could, could you help a sister out, please? Yeah. But I, I would love English subtitles on all my shows. But we don't get it. Like we have English commentators, it helps, but it's still I'd rather see mm -hmm. the subtitles. Cause yeah. Yeah. They do have some pretty extensive like chitter chatter that happens in there. And then look, there's that one guy, um, I think his name is Antonio Honda. Mm, he just yeah. randomly cuts promos in the middle of his matches. And, uh. just, and I'm like, I and the audience is laughing their asses off. I would love to know why. <laughs> but yeah, let's let's get into the G1 before we take too much time because I do have a guest downstairs with the remaining AC and it's starting to get hot. All right, let's rock and roll. G1 Climax 34. Yeah. We're going to talk. We're going to break it down. We're going to go over all the participants and we're going to give you our, our top three that are going through mm -hmm. to the tournament final or to the tournament or into mm -hmm. the semifinals, block finals, and then tournament finals. We're going to give it all to you. We're going to quickly go through all the blocks. We're kicking up A block right there. The beautiful A mm -hmm. block. I'm enjoying it. Shota Umino. Mm -hmm. Shota Umino. Uh, coming back from a hip injury. And yeah. 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 Um, I feel like he's going to be a bit of a spoiler in this tournament. I feel like he's going to be that guy. Because look at the other people that he's in this tournament with. That's mm -hmm. going to be a this is a strong block. I actually was 
I had trouble with this block. Like block B for me was pretty easy. Block yeah. B was a big question mark for me. And I took some time to, to kind of figure this one out. Um, I'm happy to hear the Shota's on the, the road to recovery. He's going to be back in time for it. That makes me happy to hear. Um, I look forward to seeing what he does. Right. Me too. I have, we'll talk about this later in the, in the show, but I have high, I have quite high hopes for Shota Umino in this tournament and where he's going to finish in this tournament uh, to really mm -hmm. show off and elevate this kid to really show what he is. Interesting. Interesting. We have the current IWGP uh -huh. heavyweight champion. Thank God it's Tetsuya Naito and not John Moxley here. <laughs> Uh, I, expect, I expect Naito to have a good tournament, but I mm -hmm. don't. I'm, I'm not. I'm not calling him into the finals. Personally, I'm not. I think he's going to have some great matches. He's going to have oh, yeah. some banger matches because this, this again, this block is kind of, it's kind of all over the place for me. Um, but yeah, great competitors in this one for him. I feel like. He's going to have some, we're going to see these, the, the, the classic Naito mind games come out, I think, this tournament. I I think the match I'm looking forward to most for him in this block is Zack Sabre Jr. Uh, just because the mm -hmm. last couple of times they've faced off in G1s, there was a year Sabre put him out injured. Uh, mm -hmm. They did get a rematch off that. Uh, again, I just, I love seeing those two square off and just mm -hmm. the different thing. Is it, I think. Yeah, Saber put him out injured, and then Naito mm -hmm. came back and beat him like super quick in the mm -hmm. rematch. So I want to see them have a good quality, like fifteen to twenty minute G one match. Yeah, what's interesting about this block is that there's a lot of people in it that have a lot of history with Tetsuya Naito. Mm -hmm. You got Sonata, you got Evil, you got Shota Umino was a young boy for him. Idolized him. He freaking modeled his look after naito for goodness sake mm -hmm. that the history with zach saber jr he's just got so much history of people who just want to beat the holy heck and crap out of him i think he's going to have a great tournament but yeah i agree i don't think he's going to uh, be winning this one no i i don't I, honestly i don't have him placed even into the playoffs because he, he's in the g1 tournament but i don't have him mm -hmm. going personally i don't have him going into the, the top three into the playoffs Really yeah yeah i have a very particular kind of um um what's the word theme that i'm going for in mind based on comments made by el presidente um earlier in the year so yeah yeah i i i, I was thinking about that and then i made my i, I made a change up today uh i saw that yeah, yeah i yeah, saw that so. <laughs> we have shingo takagi one of the other veterans in this room who i think again he's going to be a guy that comes in has baller ass matches with people but again as much as i love this man i he's not a he's not going to the g1 finals he's not winning mm -hmm. it it's 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 sad to say that it's it's he's not past his prime but i think mm -hmm. he's past what tanahashi is looking for unfortunately i have to agree with you on that however i do disagree um are we talking about who we're going to, are we going to talk about our choices and stuff after? Well, we'll give our choices, but yeah, again, I, I, I just don't put him, I'm not saying he's, I don't, I don't think he's going to the final where the A block as the A block per, recipient or participant as like the okay. representative from A block in the actual finals. I don't see. Oh going. yeah. No, no, no. I unfortunately don't either. Um, but I do think that he is going to do very well and get very, very far in this tournament. We'll talk about our choices later in when yeah. we get through A block here. Yeah. Yeah. I still think he's going to have a baller ass tournament, though. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. We have the Charisma Vacuum in Sonata. So you, we know this man is going to have a good tournament. This company mm -hmm. keeps wanting to push this Charisma Vacuum. I, I get it. The look is great, but. It's just, I don't, I don't understand it. The look is great and the wrestling is great. Like just aesthetically speaking, he looks great, you know, in ring capability. He performs so great. There's just, there's something missing. Mm. And I just can't figure out what it is. And maybe it's that he doesn't say much. Maybe that's my problem. We need Taka around more. 
Mr. Waterbender himself to come in here and and start doing what he did for Zack Sabre Jr. Because mm -hmm. before Zack Sabre Jr. was really talking to the crowd in, in Japanese, that was Taka's job. He was Taka's, Taka was was Zack Sabre Jr.'s mouthpiece in Suzuki Goon. I feel like he should probably start doing this for Chris Sonata to give him, I don't want to say credibility, but to give him something, give him anything. Maybe that's what we're missing. Yeah, it could, it really could be. Because again, Sonata is great. It's just, there's something there that every time I watch him and he's trying to do, like, I just, I just don't care. I lose all care. The matches he has are absolutely phenomenal. You look at him and Jungle Boy at Forbidden Door. Was it last year? Yeah. Tremendously in ring match, but both men were just bland as both hell. Both of them are missing that same thing. That it's just what is it that Jack Perry found in House of Torture? I don't know. Do but we it... need? Do we need to send Sonata to House of Torture? Uh, maybe, maybe he sneezes his beard back. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> Remember when he dyed it blonde to match his stupid blonde hair? No, no. Next participant. Oh, flashbacks. Right there, yeah. right out, Khan, baby, from the United, representing the United Empire. First man in this in the A blocks to be representing that this team. Um, mm -hmm. again, I have high hopes for this man in this tournament. I think he's going to, mm -hmm. he, he's been on an upswing in this tournament. I mm -hmm. feel that he could really, I think he's going to have his best G1 that he's mm -hmm. ever had. I do, I, I do see him winning. No, but he's going to have no. the best G1 he's ever had. I agree. I agree. We're going to, I think we're going to see an evolution of him to see even more of that adaptation that he has that makes him so brilliant and so good in the ring. It's nice to see him with that KOPW title. Mm. I It's my least favorite title in this company, but I feel the best person to give it credibility right now. Yeah, I, I, I 100% agree with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We move on. My heart, Zack Sabre Jr., my boy, this man is, he's stated in interviews that if he doesn't win this G1, he, he considers himself a failure, that he didn't, has, can't, doesn't get the Wrestle Kingdom spot. He, or not failure, but he's saying he, 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 he just, he's, I don't remember the actual wording, but he's saying he's, he's can't live up to his, what he should be if not by not winning a G1. And I have such high hopes for this man. I think. I want him to win this tournament so badly, but I don't know if he can. Mm, especially in this block. He has a, I mean, we've seen him do very, very well against these big guys. And but it just seems like there's a lot of big guys in this block. Like there's a lot of big guys in block B too. Don't be wrong. But it's just like him and Tetsuya Naito, they've had some pretty good battles. Greedo Khan. That's a big guy and a smart guy. You know, he's going to, he's not, I don't think he's going to be Zack Sabre Jr.'s level smart. But when you combine that big and smart, I mean, we've seen Cobb and Sabre Jr., like how he struggles with Jeff Cobb. You know, Ocon is going to be that same struggle. And you want to bet your booty that Jeff Cobb's going to be in his ear giving him advice on how to, to combat you like that one bet your booty <laughs> yeah <laughs> it, it, this is going to be a hard block for um zach saber jr to to come through to be honest like if that's what the goal is right now and that's what he's saying i mean i hope he he does win it then i don't want to i don't know if i want to see tmdk headed by sad zach saber jr hmm. sad zach oh just yeah, sitting at, just sitting at a signing table all alone, being all sad. Sad saber, <laughs> sad saber. We don't oh, want to see sad saber. We want to see happy saber. All I can think of is sad Virgil now, just sitting alone at that <laughs> yeah, table. Yeah, we don't want that. We don't no, want that. Saber Junior. No, I don't want saber sitting alone at a table. No. But I want it. I would love for him to come to Edmonton, but <laughs> uh, that, that would, would make, be nice. That would make my life, Spencer. Or or Harlan, whichever can do it. 
<laughs> War ready. The crazy, the unpredictable, the complete psychopath, and the NJPW strong champion, Gabe Kidd. The, this man is a pure wild card. He could break brackets this year. Like, I have him, I foresee him doing a lot in this tournament, but I I don't know if he's a finalist, but he could, he's a bracket, I think he's a bracket breaker. Like, he could have this just crazy run in this tournament. Oh, 100%. He's going to, you're going to shut the door on him, and he's going to just go plow right through it. Mm. This there's no shutting the door on this guy right now. He is on fire, absolute fire, and he's making quite the name for himself all over the place. Everywhere he goes, he's just running his mouth. He is making it impossible to ignore him. That's what you want in a wrestler. More importantly, that's what you want in a champion. Um, yeah, hundred percent. He's gonna freaking blow this tournament out the water yeah like it, it's, it's gonna be interesting to see what he does and i'm hoping we get a gabe kid this year that's in there to have matches and not screw himself out of wins like he mm -hmm. had he did last year he screwed himself out of a lot of wins mm -hmm. in pulling the mm -hmm. crap that he did i'm praying we get the gabe kid we've been getting this crazy yes. psycho who's just gonna beat the piss out of you i agree i agree and, and like i feel like with finley with him on this tour that that will be capable oh, of, 100%. yeah 100 percent. because finley seems to have this just demeanor he doesn't have to say anything he just has to look at the boys and they know exactly what it is that they that he wants them to do yeah mm -hmm. so uh <laughs> making his G1 debut from representing pro wrestling, Noah, but he might be a New Japan guy in the near future because he just he just ended his stable of the good-looking guys. It's Jake Lee uh, coming in here, and again, this is another guy who is is a potential bracket breaker. Um, and the fact that I you don't know, Kaido Kiyomiya got booked like shit last year, where Jake they might treat Jake Lee better and and book him like a guy. I think I feel like he's gonna get booked better and get booked like a goddamn superstar. Yeah, yeah. Well, and especially because like we're starting to see a lot of these crossover shows kind of happening with other companies. Noah is starting to lean a little bit more towards the WWE kind of end of things, aren't they? Whereas NJPW and AEW, pretty good buddy, buddy, buddies. Mm -hmm. Um. So that being said, I feel like that disconnect from Noah is actually going to be more beneficial than harmful to Jake Lee, and I think that that will definitely, especially with him coming in on the terms most likely with Bullet Club. Um, I assume he's going to come in and step right in there with Gabe Kidd, David Finley, and just be kind of that yeah. guy, have that immediate kind of, um, I want to say safety, but like it's Gabe Kidd, so I don't know how safe you are. Um, but that being said, I, I, I do agree. I think he, he's going to be booked like an absolute beast especially being again in the same block as his new found buddy mr tetsuya naito mm -hmm. that's going to be an insane rematch oh yes uh the downside to it all evil what a majestic photo though like look at the quality of that picture yeah that looks phenomenal all. Yeah. Nice a uh, fucking tool, but yeah, I think Evil is gonna be a fall guy. He's gonna have some wins, don't get me wrong, but I don't like he's gonna be a let that I think he's gonna be a that 50 50 level guy in this tournament. Like he's gonna get a few wins, but he's gonna take a few losses, like shenanigans. Yeah. He's gonna have a little dick following him around, flopped up over his shoulder. And that's gonna be a problem. Um, but I feel like, I feel like it's not going to be a big problem. I feel like it's going to be a detriment only to a certain extent. Like mm. there's a lot of big ball players in this block. Um, so that being said, like, I don't consider House of Torture Bullet Club affiliates. I know that they are, but I don't consider them as such. Mm. Just because when was the last time any of them worked together? 
It's true. Like, I, they might be working undercard somewhere, but as far as I'm concerned, House of Torture is not both of them. They don't even have the same freaking thing. They stole the poi. So, like, congrats. You stole from a freaking fairy. Good job, guys. Um, that being said, though, you know, I don't feel that, you know, with his meeting with Gabe Kidd is going to be a problem. I don't feel his meeting with Jake Lee is going to be a problem. But, like, Sonata, you know that Dick Togo is going to get involved in that. With um, Shota Umino, you know there's going to be shenanigans with that. Like, Naito. there's going to be, yeah, Naito, there's going to be shenanigans. Like, there's going to be shenanigans. But I don't think that the shenanigans are going to be paying off for them i feel like this is going to be a tournament where the shenanigans are going to maybe be more counterproductive than helpful which i hope is the case because yeah yeah i don't want to see this guy go far in this tournament <laughs> Me neither. and finally united yeah. empire's young guy it's callum newman one of the youngest men to ever enter this tournament he is the second youngest behind uh the current andrade um, to enter this tournament because Andre was a little bit younger than him when he entered G1 for the mm -hmm. first time. So Newman is one of the youngest to ever enter this tournament. Cool, cool. Like he, we can say he's the youngest of this era of mm. NGPW. We could say. Yep. Um. Yeah, I feel like yeah, I feel like this is the wild card for this block. Mm -hmm. I feel like Newman's going to play upset to a few things, and uh, I, I feel like it's going to be glorious. Like, gl I like. I feel like evil is going to fall to the empire in this and mm. it's going to be tremendous because i can only because newman is so creative with the things that he does in that ring he very much reminds me of our local son of irish um he's just so good so quick so sassy about it too mm. and also i want to say a little bit cocky because he's good and he freaking knows it 100%. He absolutely knows what he's capable of. He's going to be a great spoiler in this tournament. I'm excited for it. Yeah, me too. And again, I, I don't. And again, I don't see them doing that. Only gets one or two wins, kind of deal with him. No, I feel mm -mm. like he's going to get a few. Not again, mm -hmm. not a finalist kind of wins, but a good middle of the pack kind of player in this tournament. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 100%. Yeah. yeah. So, moving over to the B block, we're going to quickly go through the uh, participants for there, and then we'll give you our sure, sure. picks. Uh, El Fantasmo make, making his return to the G1. I guess he's there every year. But, yeah, uh, again, again, just the guy who I think will do a lot of great things in here, but, again, is a middle-of-the-pack 50-50 style, 50-50 level uh, wrestler in this tournament. I have to agree. I have to agree. He's going to give us some good stuff. Hmm? Because he's been, uh, especially now, he's kind of trying to, I think, find himself with the exit of Tonga Tonga, Tonga Tonga, Tama Tonga, and Tonga Loa. And Hikaleo which, gone, too. Yeah, and the Hikaman gone. R.I.P. R.I.P. G.O.D. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, it's unfortunate. So he's going to be kind of, I think this is going to be his wading through the water kind of thing figuring out what where he's going to fit in next kind of thing because you know where does el fantasma fit in he's very much beloved by the crowd now it would be silly for him to go to sorry to go heal um i was gonna say face he, he is face he's a very beloved face by the crowd the crowd absolutely loves him if he was to turn on him it would break their hearts Mm -hmm. We've had enough heartbreak in GPW this year, Mr. Phantasmo. Don't do that. Yep. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see where where this uh, G1 takes him and if he'll make maybe any any new friends. It's very possible. Mm -hmm. We have the the most veteran person in this tournament. He's the oldest man in the in the tournament this year at 45 years old. It's Hiroki Goto. Again, I love Goto. I think he is a phenomenal wrestler when he's on his own, doing his own thing. I think this is even better than when he's with uh, uh, Yoshihashi. But again, he's going to be a middling player in the block. I don't see mm -hmm. him winning to get into the finals or into the into the playoffs. I, I see him being just a middle-of-the-road guy here. Takes the wins, takes some losses, mm -hmm. plays spoiler to somebody. Yeah. But that's what he's here for. 
What I think I'm looking forward to the most in this tournament is Goto versus Hanare. Mm, rematch. Just, yeah. Oh, no. no, not rematch. I'm thinking of from Kagi. last year's G1, isn't it? Yeah, but yeah, that's a rematch from last year's. I think so. But I've, just to see those two smash at each other is going to be so good. Yeah, especially with the incredible growth that Hanari has had in the last little while, the new arsenal of moves that he has. It would be interesting to see how the veteran Goto is able to kind of, you know, tangle with those or adapt to those if he can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see what Goto, what Goto does in this tournament. Mm -hmm. Yoda Suji, man, this guy is going to have a hell of a tournament. Uh, this dude is going to, I think he's going to run the table. It's a very strong possibility this man runs the table. I could see him going a perfect nine and zero this year in this tournament because again, Tanahashi is behind this kid. I think Tanahashi is going to get behind this kid. Not kid, he's thirty one, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I agree. I agree. Um, you know, of this group of young boys that has come back in the in the four Musketeers: Narita, Umino, Yuyomura. This guy, you know, I've been very much on the Yoda Suji train. He's come back with just such a unique styling mm -hmm. that I feel is just so genuinely unique to his own self and character that sets him apart from all the other guys who have very obviously modeled themselves after somebody who already exists. You know, with Narita, I felt he was very much a carbon copy when he came back, especially Katsuyori Shibata, which is not a problem. I love Shibata and Shibata's wrestling. It's just, you're Ren Narita, you're not Shibata. Show us who Ren Narita is. And now we're seeing that. Same thing with um, Yomura. He's very much modeled himself after Sonata. I don't know why, but he's modeled himself after Sonata. And, and it's... The comparisons, I feel, are a detriment to, to you, Amira. Shota Umino is just like a melting pot of everybody. Mm. You know, I agree. I feel like um, Yota Suji here is uh, kind of like the guy that should be placed on top there. And it upsets me that he's already had two, you know, opportunities at a really big title and hasn't gotten them. And I mm. do know also, he obviously, he won the New Japan Cup already earlier and cashed in on that was in a losing effort but but i feel like he has worked so hard and has shown so much just consistency and also improvement that he should be rewarded in this g1 as well yeah yes i agree i uh, the other charisma vacuum in this tournament Yuri Yuri Mura looking like he's trying to take a shit. Uh, maybe doing? hold it in. <laughs> fisting. Whatever he is, he's fisting hard. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I feel like he's going to get more wins than he should, but I, I don't. I just I don't get it. I don't get it with this kid. I don't see it. I don't see what people seeing them i just don't i mean he does seem to have a willingness he has that mm. golden retriever i think is what the kids are using nowadays energy where he's ready and willing to do everything and just do it with a smile on his face not this smile but he i there is something about him that i just it's not the same as sonata though with sonata I, I really enjoy his in-ring performance. With Yumura, I don't. There's something about what he is... Per it's not how, because how he does everything is very picture-perfect. But I think it's just that it doesn't have a flair on it. It's literally just the move, I think, is what my problem is. It doesn't feel like it has any luster. It doesn't feel like it has any personality. It's literally just the move. Yep. And yeah, I feel it's a detriment to his character. I feel like if we talk too much more about it, that I'm going to lose interest in talking about it. Jeff Cobb, this guy, 
while I don't see him winning this tournament, I think he's going to have a really good run in this. I think they're going to have him take a couple strategic losses in this tournament mm-hmm. to set up challengers for that TV title in the fall to maybe a headline, maybe headline or help help fill out a uh, the capital collision. Maybe one of the people who beats him gets a capital a shot of capital collision. Somebody for King of Pro Wrestling, maybe something pretty just for one of the tours in the fall to help I, really bolster a show. I think there's going to be a couple of losses, but I still think the guy does really well. But you're going to set yeah. up a couple of good challengers for him. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think that um, I think he's going to be pretty high on the card, but I don't think he's going to, to be high enough to be into the semifinals or finals for sure. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, that would be a very smart way for them to do that because then it could set up a few title opportunities or matches for him and i think that it's a really good idea especially being that those matches are free um and especially with them doing a lot of crossover shows now it would be very very intelligent for them to start having him especially you defend that title quite regularly i agree and again i think there's somebody in this tournament that crossover is everything for one of the losses I think he's taking in this. We'll talk about it when we get to him. Oh. But, but talking about what his his tag team partner, Hanare, the man who is now one year into having that awesome face tattoo. Yes. Yeah. I love it. I mm-hmm. love it. You mm-hmm. know what's really funny is when you start to see him with a little bit of facial hair with it. Oh, it's kind of cool, actually. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but what again, do you think this, about is, this one? Uh, he is going to have a hell of a tournament. But mm-hmm. again, I, I see being that he is the current never champion. I see him taking again, like Jeff Cobb, taking strategic losses in this mm-hmm. tournament to set up challengers for the fall and maybe to set up whoever his Wrestle Kingdom opponent could be for that never mm-hmm. title. Um, I don't see him going to the semis or finals personally, um, mm-hmm. but I think he has an incredible ability ability to set up some great stuff for the for what the rest of his year leading into Wrestle mm-hmm. Kingdom with this tournament. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think this is going to be the same thing that you said for um I think you said Gabe Kid in the in the A block. Mm-hmm. I feel like he's going to run this block but he's going to be as you said very strategic about it. Um, I feel like he's going to be spoiler to a few people. Mm -hmm. I feel like he is that guy to play the spoiler also because of that never open title um, championship that he has. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, yeah, I actually think he's going to be one of the bigger spoilers in this one. I have a couple people who I think are going to be spoilers in each block. And I I feel like Kanari is going to be one of the biggest ones in this one, just because I feel like he does also, even, even though he already does have the never title, I feel like this is going to be a tournament where he's going to feel he needs to prove himself and prove why he has that title. I agree. Mm -hmm. We have the current IWGP global champion, the man who was holding this, this company down. It's David Finley. Um, Again, this man, it's again, it's another guy who is going to have an incredible run with, I think, strategic losses again to set up his fall with that, with, with that, uh, championship, with his global championship. There's going to be a couple of strategic losses to certain people to set up banger matches for the fall. I have to agree. I think he's going to do very well in this tournament, though. Hmm. He's going to do so well. I feel like he's the person to really watch in this tournament because he went from being we incredible evolution we've seen of him since he's become the leader of the Bullet Club. Because when he first came in, he was exactly what the War Dogs like namesake way. He was feral. He was chomping at the bit. He was angry. Then we saw him take this very reserved, almost backseat direction kind of role. And then we saw the clash with Will Ospreay and John Moxley in the United Empire showdown. And now we see him back to this almost like calm like cool collected until he doesn't need to be kind of person and then he just becomes unhinged again 
it's a very, I don't, I feel like it'll be like a flip of the coin on which David Finley we're going to get on what night and depending on who he faces. Mm -hmm. And I feel like he's going to be a massive, a massive deciding factor in this block in particular. Oh yeah. I think he plays a big part going into this tournament. Uh, we have the other member from House of Torture in this tournament, Ren Narita, who I see doing better than Evil does in, in A Block. I agree. But I, again, he's going to take a lot of losses just from shenanigans, I have a feeling. Yeah, again, as I mentioned, I feel like the shenanigans are going to be counterproductive to these guys in this tournament. So they have been... You know, we've had the tournaments where they've been super, super helpful, but like now we're starting to see with the super juniors, especially the shenanigans are starting to not pay off. And even in the uh, the cup, shenanigans are not paying off. So I, I feel like there are going to be shenanigans. I feel like Kenamaru is probably going to be in Arita's corner. Hmm. Um, Kenamaru or Sho, one of the two. I wonder if Sho is maybe bulking up for a. Um, a bodybuilding thing, though, because he was looking pretty jacked at the end of the Super Juniors there. Yeah, he was. Anyway, um, yeah, I feel like it's, uh, again, counterproductive for House of Torture. They're going to have to reevaluate the shenanigans. Yeah. A push-up bar is not going to help him win a lot of matches this year, I don't think. Mm -mm. Kid Kesta from AEW and DDT. This was the the name that I was going to say is a strategic loss that Jeff Cobb is going to take because they're going to they're I guarantee you they're going to want to do something with AEW on AEW TV, uh, Kanosuke Takeshita versus Jeff Cobb in a TV title match that I think it's going to happen on AEW television, maybe at a pay per view, it maybe on like a zero hour, maybe at pay per view. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's all in. Maybe it's all out because all else two weeks after all in, but uh, yeah, literally two weeks apart. Um, Last year was a week apart, uh, but I could see him being one of Cobb's losses. Yeah, I actually, I see, I see Takeshka doing very, very well in this tournament, partially because he is just that damn good, but also partially because of that stupid little sticker over his head. Mm -hmm. We know how. Tony likes to bribe people to get certain things. John Moxley, um, you know. So I, I definitely feel like I get. I he actually has a crap ton of talent, though. He is one of my favorite guys on AEW, and that's saying a lot because there's not a lot that brings me into AEW. But he is one of the things that I love watching in aew i also am really enjoying ddt so that's probably why um but that aew branding is going to be a big helper i think in pushing him through the tournament um but it'll be still fun to see what it is that he does because he has this just fun unique styling that just makes his matches so entertaining the biggest thing is that we don't need to see the phallus with him mm -hmm. that's true but again the man might appear we don't know no he's not joe hendry <laughs> imagine if he just popped up on screen right now you, you... just pops up over top of the freaking chair I'd be like <laughs> uh, and then finally it's the one third of the never open weight six man tag team champions. It is Bull oh, Mole entering his first ever G1. Again, he like Gabe Kidd is a my he is my wild card for the B block outside and mm -hmm. Hanari too. But this man is a wild card for this book because like I don't know how you book him. Do you, this man is a current champion? They they are very behind this man. Mm -hmm. Obviously. Mm -hmm. Does he have this weird ride where he just he looks like a superstar the entire tournament? Or does he play the young lion world of taking a bunch of losses? We don't know. That's the weird thing with him. I feel like he's going to be on the higher end of that mid. 
I feel mm -hmm. like he's going to play a lot of like a spoiler to a few people, mm -hmm. but I also feel like he's going to get a genuine good push and we're going to start to see what it is that he's going to eventually mold into. I'm also just crossing my fingers and hoping that day one, G1, he comes out for his match to music and with gear. Because god dang you guys, he's he's got a championship. He's now in the B block of the G1. Let him graduate. Yeah, even if it's if it's he's just in his Kazakhstani colors and has the Kazakhstani national anthem for his entrance, that's fine. Give us something entertaining, something more than young boy yeah. Full leg. Yeah, because like again, we always make the comparison to Brock Lesnar. He really is, I would say, a charismatic Brock Lesnar because he certainly seems to have more charisma and personality. Because he, we have seen him do some some little, I, I would say, goofier, hokey shit when he's worked with Yano in the past, when he's worked with Taguchi mm -hmm. in the past. Like he's willing, and he's done it with a straight face, either because he didn't know that it was goofy, or maybe he just. Maybe that's just how stoic he is when he's in there. Um, but, like, we know that he has this personality. Brock just had the black trunks for a really long time and the black, sh like, boots. And it was fine. It worked for him. But he also had the mouthpiece in Paul Heyman mm -hmm. that kind of made that work for him. And Bolton doesn't have that right now. He doesn't have mm -hmm. Tanahashi, El Presidente, following him around talking to the people. Because he's got other things to Presidente. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. I, I'm hoping for something just new and flashy than him just running down to the ring and being like, Wah. Yeah, me too. So, this is how the playoffs are this year. We have three people advancing into the playoffs from each block. Then you will have uh, the second and third place from A block face off to face to see whoever wins that will face the first place from A block. And then we'll move to the finals and the same thing over on the B block side. Mm -hmm. So I don't have graphics set up, but I'm going to give my picks for the who's my top three on each block. And then Mel will do the same for hers. My top three block A. Shota Umino is my number one. Zach Saber Jr. is my number two. And Jake Lee is my number three. I made some edits over the last day or so since I sent you my initial list. I made a couple edits. Who are your A blocks? So my A block is Shinko Takagi. In, in which place? <clears throat> okay, so... The semifinal match that I had is Takagi versus Gabe Kidd. Okay. So who's your who's your other one then who is in are automatically in first place? Well, I feel like Gabe Kidd is gonna be the automatic first placer. So he's not in your first I that's match. I, I I'm trying to figure out which I just wrote down the three people. I didn't figure this part out. So my my move through is going to be Gabe Kidd. I would okay. like to see Shingo Takagi and Jake Lee. And then okay. move on to Gabe Kidd and Shingo. Okay, so you have Gabe Kidd as your number one. You have yes. Shingo Takagi and or Jake Lee as your number two and three. Yes. And you have Shingo Takagi winning your A block semifinal. So my semifinal. No, no, my fem semifinal winner is Gabe Kidd. Okay, so who is he facing in that semifinal? Shingo Takagi. Oh, Shingo Takagi and, and Gabe Kidd wins to go face Jake Lee. Sure. Like, no, I want Gabe Kidd to go on and face the finals. No, because you have to remember the first, you have to your top three for each block. See on the screen, yes. one, two, three, and two, three have to face off to face off to get your to face your winner. Yes, your that's why I'm saying number one is Gabe Kidd. Number okay, two number and three one. is Shingo and, and Jake Lee with Shingo winning. So you'll have Shingo versus Gabe, Gabe Kidd, Kidd in the in the A block semi uh, final. Yes. So my semifinal <laughs> is Zach Saber Jr. versus Jake. Zach Saber Jr. in two, Jake Lee in three, 
And my winner of that is Zack Sabre Jr. to go on and face Shota Umino in the A block final. So, your B block. Who is your top three in your B block? My top three, my, my go through is Yoda Suchi. So he is your number one. Mm-hmm. He's in that lone spot on the right. Yes. And who is your two facing in your B block semifinal to face Jake Lee or to face Yoda Suji? Sorry. David Finley. And I almost said the wrong thing. That would have been politically incorrect. Kanosuke Takeshka. Okay. And out of those two, who fa- who wins that match to go on to face Yoda Suji? David Findlay. David Finley. So David Finley versus Yoda Suji is your A block final. All right. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, do you see what I have there though, my friend? A lot of youth. In, well, not even that. Los Ingobernables versus Bullet Club in both finals. That's actually pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. So the way I have my B block set, I have Yoda Suji running the table, going nine and zero in this tournament. That is my pick. Jeff Cobb coming in second, with David Finley coming in third. Like just gets inched out by Jeff Cobb going into third place. Mm-hmm. But my B block semifinal is Jeff Cobb versus David Finley. With David Finley coming out victorious over Jeff Cobb. Ooh, interesting. Yeah. So Mel's A block final is Gabe Kidd mm-hmm. versus Shingo Takagi. Mm-hmm. Right. And you have. Oh, wait. Gabe Kidd versus Shingo Takagi. Yeah. Sorry. And you have Gabe Kidd. Go, and you have Gabe Kidd going through to the G1 final, right? Yeah. Oof. So I've got for my A block final is Shota Umino versus Zack Sabre Jr. And my A block representative, TMDK, is Zack Sabre Jr. He is beating Shota Umino in the B or in the A block final. <laughs> so Mel block, Mel ball, Mel block, Mel ball. We both have the same B block final. In Yoda Suji versus David Finley. We have good taste. I think I, I think we both are, know who each other picked to go to the to the finals. I think we're we're picking the same person. Pretty In, much. I'm picking Yoda Suji. Hell you. Yeah. Hell All right. yeah. All right. So your G1 climax finals. The final night on August 18th is going to be headlined by Gabe Kidd representing the A block versus Yoda Suji representing the B block. Could you imagine that match? Could you just imagine the chaos that they would create, what they could do? Ah, okay. So good. Who's your winner? Gabe Kidd versus Yoda Suji. Who who is it? I want to see Yoda Suji. I want to see Yoda Suji take it. I want to see him be a cup winner and a G1 winner the same year. I want to see him get that Wrestle Kingdom spot. And I want to see Tetsuya Naito being on the other side of the ring for it. And I want to see him take his rightful place atop of not only New Japan, but Los Ingobernables de Japón. Yeah. That's a great spot. And I'll admit, mm-hmm. that was what I had in my head before today. Oh. My G1 final from the A block is Zack Sabre Jr. And from the B block is Yota Suji. I was listen. I listened. I was reading the stuff about Zack Sabre Jr. and it put me. And I know there's a youth push, but just the way Sabre's talking. Whatever you're touching, it's messing with your mic. Stop touching it. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> I'm going with Zack Sabre Jr. to beat Yoda Suji. The man can go to Wrestle Kingdom and 
maybe become the the, champ, the IWGP champion. But beat. I wouldn't be mad about that. But I don't know if Naito is the person he's facing there. I feel like there it's could true. be a fall a fall title switch. Ooh, I mean, stranger things have happened, mm -hmm. right? True. It could be. It could very well be. Good picks. Good picks, my friend. What do we, what do we do? What do we do? We'll see. We'll see. I I I I feel like you have the better chance of being right than me, but I'm I'm pulling a Melbow and picking with my heart. I mean Melbow also picked with her heart and we see where that gets her. Yeah, but your heart could get could could get could very much get you a win this year. My, my heart, heart is apparently I, up for play in the fall. I, I'm I'm pulling I'm pulling a Mel Ball in her Kenta. Her, I'm pulling I'm pulling a Kenta here. I'm I'm doing that's where I feel with Saber. I'm like I can't pick against him. I'm Mel Ball's always picking Kenta for some reason. I'm picking Saber. But just because my taste him. in men is a form of self harm. That's why. Uh, <laughs> but we have come to the end of another episode of NGBW Poodle Rest Review slash Japanese Wrestling Update. You can find me on the X at that Canada guy, TikTok, Instagram, and Threads at that Canada. You can find me on Facebook at Andre Melbourne Wrestling Talk and YouTube.com slash at Andre and Melbourne Wrestling Talk in the comics. Check our friends over out at Bam Weekly over on Facebook. Check them out and keep the, notified for when their stuff comes back. And that's where our audio of all of our Japanese wrestling content will end up. You can find me right here if you're watching Japanese Wrestling Update or over on the Twitch and the YouTube at youtube.com slash our local stuff at our local session or uh, our local session on twitch.tv. Uh, you can find me this coming Wednesday with my boy old Ed as we review. I think it's Deadpool. The Deadpool? You might want to figure that out. Yeah, I can't remember which one we're doing. Might be Ant Man. Oh, Ant Man. Ant Man. We're doing Ant Man. Deadpool is coming two weeks after. Sorry. So we're, 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 we are reviewing Ant-Man, I'm fairly sure. We're reviewing something on the on the MCU Rebound. And then coming up later on that weekend, you'll find me, Ol Ed, and uh, Mark, Talk, Mark from Mark Talks Wrestling, and another special guest as we review Deadpool and Wolverine, either Saturday afternoon slash evening or on sometime on Sunday after Bobby's show is over. So. Yes. That's yeah, and great. then one more quick, quick shout out: uh, YouTube.com slash at Backbreaker Video, Twitch, uh, and uh, YouTube.com slash at Backbreaker underscore Gaming for all of Mike the Ref's great content, where he simulcasts our stuff. Uh, you can find him on Twitch.tv slash Mike the Ref for all his live content. Melball, where can they find you? If you're wanting to follow a Melball, you can follow her on the X thing at Collins Melball. You can follow her on everything else: Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Mastodon, and Blue Sky at Melball. You can also find me on this show, <laughs> our local establishment programming, Japanese Wrestling Update, every Friday at 8 p.m. Mountain Time, unless it's not. And then we will let you know. Um, this The next episode, I believe, is also going to be pre-recorded. Yes, because we're going to be attending LPW. Yes. Are we not? Yeah, yes, yeah. Right. so that'll be fun. Got Smiley Kylie Ray. For that show, isn't it, or is that the next show? No, nope, Smiley Kylie Ray. That's this. That's yay! Song. Yay! Makes me happy. And there's a big, um, there's a big announcement coming out today on Friday from LPW about. Uh, I know what it is already. I know. I do too. Peggy told me. I know. Peggy told me too. Yay! Love it. Anyway, um, I will look at the list with Digi. No, I think I'm done with that one. Uh, you can also find me on Astro Bizarro's YouTube channel where we do our show, Ladies Wrestling Showcase. We just did a show last week where we talked all about the Mercedes um, and Stephanie Valkyrie match at Forbidden Door, as well as Mina Shirakawa and Tony Storm. So go check that out to hear all about that. Um, if you're wanting to watch NGPW, we will leave a link in the description box below. It is NGPWworld.com. It is, I don't remember the yen. But it works out to 10 Canadian Shadow Chance Bears. But um, it's actually more like, I believe, Andre. Oh, whoa. Whoa. Am I having a stroke? Nope. 1450 according to that guy over there, is still an amazing price to watch some amazing professional wrestling. 
Oh, Jay. My trusted friend and Colin, do you have anything else to say to the beautiful people? I just want to thank y'all so much for showing up, whether it's on, uh, if, if you're watching on Japanese or Update, thank you so much for showing up there. If you're watching on Andre Mobile Wrestling Talk for New Japan Puro Wrestling Review, thank you so much for showing up there. Uh, you can find me and Mel. Uh, it just just th thanks for all the support. Um, if you're on our YouTube, uh, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below, uh, share us out to your friends, family, and just all the wonderful God cats that exist in the world. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can be alerted every time we drop a new video. Ding dong. God cat. God cat. That's what I thought you said. Yep. Uh, if you're <laughs> if you're watching stuff on Netflix, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I do not have Netflix. No, I have Prime. Sorry. That's what it is. That being said, I am your Melba. Over there is Andre. We will see you next time. Adios.